Hello, I'm Melanie Presikowski. I'm a pediatric emergency physician and assistant dean for admissions at the Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine. At VTC, we pride ourselves on having an innovative curriculum, working with a hospital system that has cutting edge technology, being in close association with a research institute that's constantly pushing the limits of what the mind can discover. And we pride ourselves in really using innovative techniques to help our students with self-care and enriching their learning experience. Today, I'm here with Emily Holt Forst, Director of uh, Academic Counseling and Enrichment Services here at Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine. I'm hoping that while you spend some time with us today, you can be assured that prospective students at Virginia Tech Carilion will find themselves supported in their medical education, that they will find professional, educational, and academic support to ensure their success, and a wellness program that I think is truly innovative and one of the real strengths at our institution. Emily, can you please tell us a little bit about the history and background of Virginia Tech Carilion's wellness program? Absolutely. The program started in 2017 as a result of a conversation I had initially with uh, some students in the class of 2021. They started asking me a variety of questions about different wellness things at the school and it got me to thinking. So I created a wellness weekly newsletter, the first one that I ever created, which is now a weekly uh, newsletter to the students. I took that newsletter to my supervisor, Dr. Aubrey Knight, the Senior Dean of Student Affairs, and said, what do you think? Can we, do you think the students would benefit from this uh, weekly newsletter? And he said, yes, I do, make that, and also, while you're at it, start a wellness committee. And I said, all right. <laughs> and so he handed me a group of students that he had already self-selected, one from each uh, level of uh, the academic year, and then um, I, built upon that group of students and we added a couple of faculty and staff members and got uh, hit the ground running and met on a regular basis to establish different types of programs that we would do for the students and here we are. Can you tell me about some of those programs? Absolutely. We started a program on mindfulness. Uh, but, uh, Lori Seidel is one of our WAC members, Wellness Advocacy Committee, short for that is WAC. Uh, she's on our uh, WAC team and she meets with the students uh, anytime between once a month uh, to twice a month, depending on what the students are needing in a given moment in time. We also have Puppies and Pizza. It's a a December event every year where we bring the therapy dogs from a local organization in Roanoke to the school and we also provide pizza. We keep them separate from each other so <laughs> that there's no puppies eating pizza and the students really love that event. That's one of the most popular actually of the things we do. I believe it. What's not to love? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have the fitness challenge going right now. We have 28 teams participating in that challenge. Teams of four. It includes faculty, staff and students and they compete. Basically, they count points for every uh, 15 minutes they exercise. They get points and the grand prize is a sweatshirt and bragging rights. And uh, so a variety of things. Can you tell me a little bit more about what's in your newsletter? I know I've, mm -hmm. I've tried some of the recipes you've mm -hmm. sent out. What else is in that mm -hmm. newsletter? In addition to a recipe every week and a quote of the week, uh, we try to find a motivational quote that uh, helps the students endure um, tough moments in time. We also add a variety of things that are going on in Roanoke, different community events that the students can get involved in, anything from karate lessons to something going on at the art museum here in town called the Taubman to uh, Roanoke Parks and Rec activities that we have available, as well as our ongoing wellness activity advertisements uh, that, we, that we're doing. So it sounds like that's very multidimensional. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit, is your WAC, your mm -hmm. Wellness Advocacy mm -hmm. Committee, made up of a diverse group of people? Yes, we have uh, quite a, the group of students. We have Lindsay mm -hmm. McGuire, she's our fourth year student, and she's a uh, very fitness-oriented individual herself, and she competes regularly. And, um, and then we have uh, Jeff Henry, he's our third year student, and we have Aisha Carr, who's our second year student, and Aisha's a major artist, she loves um, um, to uh, lead our art therapy uh, sessions that we do a couple times a year. Uh, I skipped over Jeff. Jeff brought tea and jazz to the, uh, the school and so we have uh, tea and jazz events uh, regularly and it's just as it sounds. Mm -hmm. The students drink tea, they listen to <laughs> jazz, and they socialize with each other. Depending on the year, we either play games or have it as a study moment in time. It just depends. And then Robin Goodrich is our new M1 student and she's also very much into fitness and uh, would like to bring yoga uh, at some point in the future. Okay, well that sounds really lovely. So, um, 
I understand that the wellness comes out of a, a philosophy of really self-awareness and self-care. Can, can you tell me why you think that's important for our students? Absolutely. The uh, fundamental need that students have in order to succeed academically is to be well themselves. So eating properly, sleeping properly, and exercising properly. And so the wellness advocacy team really just tries to make sure that those basic Maslow's hierarchy of needs are attended to in, in a very robust way so that students have the wellness that they need in order to be successful in their academics. And that um, kind of leads me to some programs that I've heard of um, that you have helped sponsor, Koru Mindfulness, mm -hmm. Helping Friends in Distress. Mm -hmm. How do you feel they've played a role in the mental health of our students? Mm -hmm. um, medical school is, is challenging uh, and anyone that um, does a Google search on um, medical student wellness is going to find articles that appear from um, Lottie Derby and Tate Chanifelt pop right up. And so with things like mindfulness, we give the students the opportunity to, to channel that energy, that stress that, um, that comes with medical education in a positive way. And through, and so with mindfulness, students have the opportunity to acknowledge the stress that they're feeling and then allow it to pass through that moment and just be in, in the present state. And Lori does a really wonderful job of helping cultivate that. Not only does she do it on a volunteer basis with our students, but we also have the longitudinal electives that she um, is in charge of one of. And so if the students want to have a more robust experience with that, they can join the longitudinal, elect longitudinal elective with her. It's okay, a hard thing so to that's say. a longitudinal elective mm -hmm. in mindfulness. Exactly. That, that is part of our curriculum. Exactly. So it sounds like this is really pushing the envelope on um, bringing mindfulness into the education system and our medical students may become thought leaders and be able to bring this type of mindfulness to where they become residents and faculty members. Absolutely true. Uh, so are there any wellness events that are coming up that we should know about? Yes, uh, Aisha is going to be leading another art therapy session the next on the 21st. Um, we have open mic night on the 28th. Jeff is leading the way with that. Activity open mic night, also known as the Medical Student Talent Show, mm -hmm. and that will be taking place at a local coffee house. And then we also have self-defense taking place in April. Oh yes, and I've seen that's a, that's a regular mm -hmm. event as well. Mm -hmm. So in admissions, we often hear the fact that Roanoke is located in the Blue Ridge Mountains as one of the real draws for mm -hmm. some students who are interested. Can you tell me, do any of our wellness events involve where we are geographically? Absolutely. Uh, we do our best to incorporate the community and through the fitness challenge, for example, anyone who participates in skiing in one of the local mountains or hiking on any of our local trails our greenway, participating in any sort of uh, bike riding or uh, running on the trails, absolutely. Uh, Roanoke has all kinds of outdoor activities and they definitely um, it, it play is, a role. It is kind of a healthful fit city mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. If prospective students want to learn more about our wellness mm -hmm. program, what can they do? Absolutely. They can contact anyone on the wellness advocacy team. We have a website that students absolutely can access. It also has past editions of our wellness weekly that they could check out, but get in touch with any of us. We'd all be happy to provide um, ideas about what we do and take additional new ideas that they might want to offer. <laughs> so Emily, any last thoughts about wellness you'd like to leave our viewers with? Um, I'm really proud of our wellness advocacy team. They're a hard working group of folks and we are every year getting better and better and building upon what we've done in previous years and I'm looking forward to what we do next year. I agree. I uh, am also proud of our wellness programs. I think they really speak to the culture that we have here, which is one of collaborative learning. We learn our preclinical years in problem-based or PBL groups, and um, I think it really fosters collaborative learning, which is the way we'll work as future physicians. Um, and additionally, we have a pass-fail system, which I think really allows us to put our emphasis on learning rather than rank. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for Absolutely. taking the time to share with us today. My pleasure.